Hello fellow statisticians, we are going to take a look today at how to run a G-Power sample size and power calculation for correlation. In G-Power, it's called the exact test correlation by variate normal model. This is just simply saying that we are going to test the correlation between two variables. So we have an example here. We have a study looking at the correlation between our studied and test score. Now, of course, with the study looking at um, correlation between these two variables, we would expect a fairly strong correlation. So we're going to say here that we expect a Pearson correlation value of R equal to 0 0.70. And the question is, how many students are needed to detect a significant difference from a Pearson R equal to zero? So the first thing that we want to do is come over here to G Power and select exact tests. And once we have selected exact tests, we want to make sure that correlation by varied normal model is selected. The next step here is to select the type of power analysis and we're going to do this with a priori power calculation. Okay, so what are our input parameters? Well, first of all, we have to select the tails. If it's possible that you could have a positive or a negative correlation come out of your study, you should use a two tail. However, if you expect a just a positive or just a negative correlation, you could therefore go with just a one tail. But for this example here, we are going to use a two tailed power calculation. This part right here with correlation for P H1, this refers to the alternative hypothesized value, the value that we expect to get in our study, and that's a Pearson R of 0 0.70. Alpha error probability, we want to put in usually 0 0.05 or 0 0.01. In this case, we'll go ahead and leave the alpha error at 0 0.05. This is a probability of a type one error. All right. What kind of power would we like to see with this analysis? Usually this is 80% or higher. Power represents a percent chance of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis. So if we set this to 80, we are saying that we expect there to be an 80% chance of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis. And the last step here is correlation PHO. This is the Pearson R value, assuming the null hypothesis is true. And that's the value that we're testing our expected correlation against. In most cases, this will be a value of zero. Okay, so we've got our information entered. All we have to do is come in here and click on calculate. So what you see here is a red curve representing the null hypothesis distribution. You see here that zero is the middle value or the mean value of that distribution. So this is assuming the null hypothesis is true and that the correlation will be equal to zero. Based on the data and information that we've entered, we have the alternative hypothesis curve and that's over here on the right. And you see here that the peak point on that is approximately a correlation of 0 0.70. And so we have a beta here and then everything to the right of this green line here represents power. It is one minus beta. And so what is this area here represent? Well, it represents uh, rejecting the null hypothesis because we are on the right side here of this region of projection, which is denoted by the green line. And so the actual power for this study would be about 81.7%.
and 81.7% chance of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis with how many participants? With 13 participants. So we go ahead and put that in and we are all done. So I have another example here. Sometimes the null hypothesis Pearson R value will not be zero. It could be, for example, be a value of, say, 0 0.50. And so we want to run a power calculation with the null hypothesis value being 0 0.50 instead of just plain zero. So I'm just going to make that adjustment here. The null hypothesis value, 0 0.50. Great, we'll go ahead and keep our tails at two tails. We will keep the, well, we're gonna change the alternative hypothesized correlation value that we expect to get in our study. We're gonna increase it to 0.75. Alpha here, we're gonna keep that at 0.05. And the power that we desire, we're going to hit, go ahead and just leave that at 80%. So what this is doing, it is now checking out what power would be and how many participants we would require if we want our expected correlation value of 0.75 to be significantly different from a null value of 0.50. And you can see here that the power would be 80%. So there is an 80% chance of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis with 46 participants. And there you go.